the last day of the last year, as all of us, we prepared ourselves. We will go to a party and uh, stay together with our friends, celebrating the new year together. Suddenly, I decided or I said to myself, why not if I go to the hairdresser, hairdresser, I go to the hairdresser and cut my hair. Just only a little, something like that. Then I went. Uh, my hairdresser was not uh, over there, but someone else. He is new. I said to him, I explained to him everything, and he said that, yes, yes, yes. All the time, I tell him something, he said, yes, yes, okay, I know, yes, I know. Okay, great. Then, I gave him my head. And suddenly, in the end, I found this. But he cut my hair, as you saw now. Suddenly I found myself like that and I said to him, or I asked him, why? He said, no, it is nice. It is good for you, sir. I said, sir, what is this? Oh, sorry, doctor, it is good for you. And I said, doctor, sir, what had happened to my hair? It was like that. So I said that I will stop my videos for a while until my hair come a little bit longer and then I start once again with you but suddenly I said today no I will do my video or I will film my video because of you so today I will talk with you about Hajala dance which all of you love it very much let's go now and see what I will explain to you Of course, all of you saw Hagala and or Hajala. Uh, here in Cairo, we say Hagala, and uh, some people say Hajala, Hajala, and in its place they say Hajala, Hajala, like this. All of us we saw Hajala or Hagala or Hajala. And all of us, we love it very much, especially on the stage, of course. And you saw Rida Troop, Kaumiya Troop, and uh, other troops or other dance groups, they uh, performed on the stage. All of us, we love it very much. This type of dance uh, consists of uh, some men dancers with one dancer. It is like that, which is the same also in its place. Uh, Hajala dance, as all of you, you know exactly, from northwest side of Egypt. Uh, all the countries, I mean the northern uh, African countries, they are famous for Hajala dance. But what you don't know actually that there are over 13 until maybe 18 countries, uh, all of them, they are located, or all of them located in Africa. Uh, they have Hajala dance too. So this is a fantastic if I say something like this. Every country of these countries uh, have their own type of Hajala dance. Except uh, Northern African countries, uh, which they are uh, close to each other in this type of Hajala or Hajala dance steps which all of us, we loved it, or we love it, I'm sorry, all of us, we love it very much. The steps, very close to each other in Northern African countries, uh, and there are five countries, as you know, Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, and Morocco. These countries have this type of Hajala dance. But of course, the history or the story of Hajala changing a little bit uh, depends on the country and the society. That's it. But today I will talk with you about the Egyptian Hajala or Hajala, as I told you. And let me tell you uh, from the beginning that this is a desert type of dance, which it means belongs to uh, Bedouin dance a type of Bedouin dance. Uh, Hajala dance 
very famous, of course, in Egypt, uh, or let me tell you, yes, also started to be famous after Kaumea and Reda Troub, they performed on the stage. Uh, step by step or later became much more famous all over Egypt and most of the dance groups they started to do same as either Reda Troop or Kaumeya Troop. The last video I explained uh, something about Hajala which is the dancer she, ha she has a digger or she have a dagger and she throw it onto the ground and uh, men one by one trying to, or they, uh, one by one, they try to take off or remove Hajala from, uh, I'm sorry, ha uh, dagger from the, uh, from the ground. As, and also I explained to you that it is something uh, theatrical. It is not in reality. Same as I told you in the last video. And I think that 99% it comes from Kaumeya troupe, who they created this uh, story on the stage. Of course, it's a wooden stage, and uh, if I throw a knife or a dagger, will uh, uh, stand will stand on the ground. Wooden stage. It is like that. So it is easy, like like this. This is the story uh, which became famous all over. Uh, the world, but it is not in uh, in reality. In reality, actually, men they started in the beginning uh, singing, or let me say, uh, clapping and singing until Hajala come to them or enter the place. Uh, they do the this type of uh, of clapping and singing, and she start dancing or start dancing in front of them. It is like that in reality. Hajala, this word, it is female word, belongs female, not male. But the, uh, they say it or they give it to the group of dancers, men and women. But if I say Hajala, only the word over there or in the Arabic, country, uh, Arabic language, it means exactly uh, a female word, not male word. By the way, in Arabic language, we have a female word and male word. So, hajala, it is a female word, belongs a female, not a male, as I told you uh, now. Suddenly, I found, since long time, of course, I found that uh, some researchers, they said that hajala coming, this word coming from partridge, partridge bird which was very strange for me when I heard this in the beginning or since long time. Let me give you an example. My name is Tamer, as all of you, you know. Tamer, it means, or not in Arabic, but I will say in English first. In English, the taming, this, this word or this name coming from the taming of the shrew woman, it is completely different than the meaning of the name. And tamer, that means exactly the one or the man who taming the animals, the wild, the wild animals, taming the wild animals. If, if this meaning belongs to my name, of course not. Because tamer, T-A-M-E-R, tamer, this name also has another meaning in Arabic, which it means the man who sell dates, you know, dates, fruits, uh, the palm tree, dates. So the man who sell dates, his name is Tamer, or they call him, sorry, they call him Tamer, he, not his name, but they call him Tamer. This is my name, not his name, my name. So my name is Tamer, which in Arabic means exactly uh, the man who sell this fruit, actually only this fruit. So this is my name in Arabic. And in English, of course, as you know now, I am taming the wild animals. Wow, it is like that. So what do you think if I say now hajala? Of course, hajala have another meaning, which it means exactly hopping, hop, hopper. Uh, hajala coming from hajl, and hajl, this word, it means man or woman 
move or jump onto one leg and the other leg is up like that. So this is exactly uh, hajala or hajj. That is the meaning of this. So for this reason, suddenly, uh, uh, after I started uh, to study dancing in the Academy of Arts with my sources and uh, uh, the physiology and uh, 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 anthropology and so on and so on, and psychology is also, I started to understand the meaning of hajala, which it means exactly that hooper. She is hopping, she jumping or do jump steps like that. I asked myself why. Why she is doing like this? Then I started to study these people, uh, their places, their minds, uh, their way of life and uh, a lot of things around them until I found that girls or these women when they were children their families and friends all the time they say that or let me say that their families love very much uh, a fat child all over the Arab countries or most of the Arab countries since long time they love very much to see their children are fat, which it means not bad, it means good, which it means exactly they feed them well. They have food, they have uh, a good life, so for this reason they became fat. Of course, sometimes when they become much more fat children, it is not good for their healthy, but it was like that since long time. In Bedouin life, Bedouin's family, they love very much fat children, which it means they feed them well all the time, which it means they are healthy uh, or they have a healthy uh, uh, life or wonderful, good life. These girls, especially girls, children, when they move, sometimes or most of the time they jumping. They jump. Looks like a duck when the duck move, huh? like that. They love very much when girls move like that. So they say that they are moving like a dog. You know, a duck, not dog. I'm sorry, say dog. No, duck, like a duck. So they love it very much. And all the time they say good words for the children. This exactly what had happened when they were children and stayed or presented in their minds until now, presented in their, in their minds. It is, we say that it is a mental uh, deposit in their minds since long time when they were children and they stayed in their minds until they became women and they do it same as it is, but with a little bit change uh, in their type of dance. This is exactly the meaning of why girls do this step since long time, and now they have it on their type of folk dancing. Of course, men and women, they love it very much. So for this reason, men, they uh, love very much to see uh, the woman, the hajala, do it in the front of them. And she feel that she is still a child in the front of them. And also, she is still a beautiful child. So she do it like this. This is the Hajj or the Hajjala. Another researcher said something else and so on and so on, which is, I think most of the researchers, they were not dancers or they don't understand this type of dance. We have to know exactly what is behind the step, what is what is behind the story to understand exactly why these people do something like that. This is exactly the way in anthropology to understand this type of folk dancing. This is what I love, of course, to share with you. And this is my hair, which I'm still... Uh, but <laughs> what can I do now? I have to wait until uh, my hair come back again long, longer or bigger or... Blah. I'm sorry. I'm so sad now. What can I do? I have to wait until... Mm -hmm. 
Oh, we come back again to Hajjala dance. This is type of Hajjala dance. Also, some dancers, uh, sometimes they love very much to explain the deep story uh, inside Hajjala uh, dance. Or let me say, sometimes they love very much to explain the music, which is Shitwiya and so and so. Please, these parts of Hajjala music or songs not actually important for us to do to do them or to uh, act with them on the stage to these parts on the stage uh, in hajala actually we have to know that a dancer dancing in front of uh, a few men uh, three four could be two yes also but in uh, in reality not two uh, at least four uh, so let me say three or four persons, uh, men. I mean, uh, male. I mean, I mean, she dancing in the front of them, using her waist in dancing, like the way all of you, you know, actually. Uh, and you can create a story, a little story. Sometimes she can go choose one by one, play with him, or dancing together, do some performance together, and so on, the second, the third, the fourth, something like that. Sometimes the men can be around her, dancing around her. You can create your story as you feel, as you know, but you have to understand one girl and a few boys. It is like that. This is the, the, the main point in Hajjala. Clapping, for example, this clapping, they have to do like that, from up, one hand up, and go down like that. Not like this, or not like this, not like this, but like that, because this is the way they are doing. And let me tell you that this is because also the geographical area. In the geographical area, of course, they, ha they has to open their fingers like that, and when they go, Clapping, they clap, they clap like this, like like this, to make a sound. Because this is open area. It is in a desert, so it is open area. So must be, must, must be like that. This is exactly uh, what are they doing. Of course, men or dancers, I mean male dancers, they go a little bit down uh, when they do this with one leg in the front, little bit in the front, and the other back a little bit, something like that, and they go to the front, to the front, like that. This is the base of kafafa dance. Kafafa dance. Kafafa dance, it is another type of dance, belongs also Bedouin and in some other cities in Egypt, in west side of Egypt, yes, also and also in Upper Egypt. Maybe one day I can explain to you much more about it. Quickly, this is the story of Hajjala. Ah, I forgot one uh, uh, main point, yes, also. When Hajjala dancing, she can use her waist or she move her waist either front or back, can be like that, or up and down, but through her moving, through her walking, if we say walking through her uh, hopping. So you have to know this exactly. Never do hajala dance onto your tooth. It is not like this, but must be a flat all the time. Her leg or her feet must be flat all the time and she can move with a little bit plie, if we say plie, or her knee a little bit down and also some of the hajala dancers can go bend in the front a little bit yes also not to give her bow back very back or something like this because this type or this way or or this form of uh, moving it belongs much more south africa which is could be one day I also i will explain to you much more about their dance in hajala to let you see exactly or to understand exactly the difference of these steps and of course i will tell you why also they do something like that 
So this is the way of her when she go dancing. Sometimes Hajala also she can wear a veil and she cover her face with this veil. Sometimes it could be something like this also. And sometimes she give her veil or she push her veil back back and of course with the yashmak she uh, using yes also a yashmak or something looks like the yashmak and the dress of course all of you you know if you want to know much more about the dress just write me ask me about it and i will explain to you much more about the dress of uh, hajala exactly and why it is looks like that because this is also belongs to the geographical area number one belongs to geographical area and number two it belongs to the, the society of Bedouin uh, the way Bedouin thinking because because this is yes also important to understand which part of women's body women's body which part of the body they love it very much over there for this reason they do this way of hajala dance a secret maybe one day we can have a time together or in, in, in one of my classes or one of my lectures and I will explain you much more about why. Yeah. So this is the story of Hajala, which I hope you like it. And this is the uh, video today I love to share with you. And of course, I love to hear from you. If you have any comment or any question, please write me or write me down uh, a comment. And of course, I will uh, uh, explain to you if I have answer. But my question now, what can I do with my hair? It becomes now, oh, I'm so sad. I'm crazy about it. It takes time until become long once more again. Oh, my God. See you next video.